I mean, I, I'm going to be honest. I feel a lot of pressure with the camera angle, no. with you being in the, no, uh, no, on the couch no. now. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. No, um, no pressure. I'm, you know, people think of me as this filmmaker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, so, uh, I'm this artist. I don't really know what to do. I, there are, there's a whole, you know, all the names at the end of the credits. Yeah. They do everything. Directing is just telling other people what to do. That's well, yeah. That's the. I don't name. know how to make an image. I'm not a camera guy. Yeah, well, no one thinks you know what you're doing. Yeah, no, I have. <laughs> it's in the title, director. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> yeah, they would have a better title with more specifics. Right. If if I knew what to they do, do. editor. <laughs> Those things exist. Oh, that's pretty good. AJ, you direct. That's right. Um, but I don't want to start with that. What I want to start oh, with. Oh, is, you have things you want to start with. <laughs> no, I went. So, for the listeners, I used the bathroom at Rich's place. Yes. And you have Beach Babe sea salt spray. Yeah. That stuff looks awesome. That's why I got that volume in I, my hair. I, I, my hair is thinning. I almost took a spritz. It, listen, take a spritz, take two. All <laughs> right. I got a few more in the closet over there. Yeah. Now, because you have straighter hair, I have very straight, fine hair. Yeah. It's nice. It's man. it's nice. It's nice hair. You got a good set of hair. I got, and I'm trying to hold on to it. So I throw that beach salt in. Mm -hmm. For a very pale person, my hair smells like this, uh, the beach. Yeah, it throws you off. If you're blind, it would really throw you off. Did you grow up near the beach? I mean, Long Island. Long Island's kind of beachy. <laughs> Long Island, they got a few beaches. This isn't Ohio where we got fucking no. nothing. No, no, no. You know, Kanyat, Ohio, by any chance? Who at Ohio? What? Conneaut, Ohio. Condiat, Ohio? Conneaut. All right. Conneaut. My girlfriend's family's from there. Yeah, that's the thing. All you know, right. Ohio, like, I think... I'm from Columbus. It's a city. There's two Big. million people. I'm from the Burbs. It's, it's a similar existence, albeit on a smaller scale, to, like, Westchester County. Okay. Or, or like to a smaller scale. To a smaller scale. Is Columbus urban? How urban's Columbus? Columbus is urbanish. It's not New York, but like there's a swath of it that's pretty urban. Okay. Um, you got buildings. Victoria's Secret. Victoria's Secret. Um, I don't know what else. There's something nationwide else. Nationwide is headquarters. Nationwide. Wendy's is headquarters. I didn't know that. Dave Thomas. D. Toms parked his bald head in fucking Columbus. He did. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's like, it's a city and you know, a lot of people in New York, when they hear that I'm from Ohio, they assume farm town. And that was just, my existence couldn't have been further from that. It was very suburban city. Very thing. average. Very average. Um, not humble beginnings, not a big beginnings. No, you worked at like Deloitte or something. Yeah, I did work at a consulting company yeah, yeah, yeah. for a couple of years. I worked at Ernst & Young. Ooh, um, you used to live in this neck of the woods. I do. That's the other thing I wanted to talk about. Now, okay. now we're getting somewhere. Now All right. Talking. We've had a couple sips of water. We're moving. Yeah. We're shaking. This isn't your average pod. Also, where do I look? Should I be looking you at look you? You can look there. You can look at me. I'm you can look, look in that corner. It doesn't matter. I'm going to look at you, but I'm going to open up to the camera. That's yeah. A director. Yeah, there we go. There, there we go. All right. All right. So I like that this podcast is in the financial district. Oh. One, I also like that we're not doing it over Zoom. You can't do a pod over Zoom. It's so hard. And, you know, I, I respect it. Like, I respect the hustle. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm much more diplomatic than Rich. But, um, God, it's hard. And then I was listening to um, Ethan Hawke and um, Ewan McGregor on a podcast this week, and it was uh. clearly over Zoom, and you hear the audio warble. Yes. You know the Zoom warble? <laughs> was it at we were they, did it feel conversational? It oddly did, but okay. like there was a delay. The delay is <laughs> what kills it. That's why I can't do Zoom. It's like you need to have an editor for the delay. <laughs> Um, but no, so I'm glad that this is live, one. But two, I'm glad it's in the financial district, not just because I lived here, but I think the financial district truly gets a bad rap. This is a good neighborhood. It's the best neighborhood, okay. even though you left. I don't want to go that far. <laughs> it's the best. I'm not going to sit here and make the judgment. You also lived... That's the best, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you why it's a good neighborhood. Okay, fill me in. The apartments are spacious. Yes. For Manhattan, that is very hard to find, especially south of 14th Street. 
In fact, this is the only neighborhood south of 14th Street where that's possible. Boom. Battery Right park. when I walked into your apartment building, I didn't feel like my body was being compressed or something. Yes. Also, no one was there. Like my ex-girlfriend lived in the West Village. She had a two-bedroom apartment. Less square footage than this. Than this studio. Than this studio. Yes. Yeah. So I like that there's space. Um, I like that it's kind of quiet. Yes. It is noisy as shit in Manhattan. That's why I live in Brooklyn. I can't deal with the noise. Right. That's 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 one of the reasons. Brooklyn why. Heights. Very quiet. You eventually moved. You moved to the suburbs. I moved to the suburbs. Brooklyn Heights are the suburbs. Of the suburbs with an equinox. <laughs> Um, but yeah, and then the other thing, everyone always says like, oh, Fida's the worst neighborhood. It, it's like, it's just, it's like Murray Hill and Fida. It's like, dude, you got the water down here? Yes. You got all of the subway lines. Name one, they're here. Every single one. And the only thing I ever didn't like about the Fida was there's a lot of tourists at the Statue of Liberty. Oh, that's interesting. So I would go running through Battery Park, and there's just fucking tourists everywhere. A lot of tourists there, okay. So, other, But other than that, truly, it was a great neighborhood. And then everyone was like, ah, but there's nowhere to go out in the financial district. I don't drink alcohol. So, like... It doesn't the, impact the, you. It doesn't impact me. So, it's just like, it's actually a pretty good neighborhood. If I were to live in Manhattan, I would strongly consider it. But, you know, I'm, I'm four years into Brooklyn. You're living, four years into Brooklyn. Yeah, I've lived in Brooklyn for a while. That's mm. pretty good. Um, okay. But anyways, I don't know if that's relevant to your listeners, but... Uh, Could it also be that like you are... your uncle listens to this or something. <laughs> Rich is living a good life down here. I don't have an uncle, so you're, you're in luck. But is it because uh, you're also an artiste now? So you're like, I can't live in Manhattan. I need to live in Brooklyn. But also, mm. I come from a little money. <laughs> so I got to stay in Brooklyn Heights. In Brooklyn Heights. And I'll go in the fucking uh, Bushwick or any of that poor shit. I mean, no comment. <laughs> no, I'm just yeah. Uh, what I will say is I've been thinking about this idea of like I, I'm sort of doing the long con because I sort of dress sort of preppy. Yes. And like, I mean... You know, I, I don't think I can ever fully shed that programming. If I were to show up in like full Bushwick garb, that but that's not you. That would not be me. It would be so dishonest. Even if I was like trying to find myself artistically, yeah. Like I would still need to wear a shirt with buttons. Yeah, just and, take mushrooms like a fucking regular person. <laughs> <laughs> but I like I. What I will say is, uh, like probably eighty to ninety percent of my friends that are not comedians artists writers types like they do live in manhattan and i hang out with my friends in manhattan so it's like it is this weird balance i, I don't know um what was your question yeah you want would you can't live in bushwick oh yeah no i can't no. i don't feel like i feel uncomfortable there um even though i'm sure everyone is like trying to do similar things that i'm doing creatively they just don't have any fucking money <laughs> no it's, that's even though most some of them do that's just, this is true. There are just like people walking around Bushwick, like with no jobs and no clothes, and like a five so million much dollar money. trust fund. Yes, <laughs> and you know what I say? That's the real life. Good con. for you. Good for you. That's the American dream. It really is, because like, I, if the American dream is to accumulate like as much wealth as possible, and then presumably like pass it down to your kids, right? Like they technically are living the American dream. The uh, the Bushwick <laughs> trust fund mafia. I don't know. Yeah, Bushwick's weird. You got two people living the American dream. The rich white people who don't work at all and then like some Dominican teenager trying to get into med school. Yeah. They're both in Bushwick. It's true. Um, but yeah, I, I'd say I, I am trying to do... Sometimes I like to... I feel like I'm cosplaying sometimes as like a Manhattanite. Okay. And what I mean by that is like... You know, I work in an office. Do you work in an office? You still have a day job? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I work in an office. Yeah, I work at like a media company. It's pretty chill. Oh, okay. Um, but and like there, but there's a lot of suits around, and like there's I, always suits, and like it's just easier. The path of least resistance is just to dress like everyone else. Yes. Um, but like it, sometimes I feel not really like a hypocrite, but it's it's almost like a joke in my head because I'm dressed like one of these suit guys even though it's just not really me but i don't have any resentment towards it i actually think it's kind of fun i feel like i'm playing dress up every day are you wearing a suit do you wear a full suit no, i wear a suit but like, do you wear a shirt and tie no tie but like i wear like slacks and like a dress shirt okay 
I know. Okay. I, well, it goes back to Mancusi. Uh, he was just here. He doesn't understand why people do that. Oh, I saw the Mancusi clip. You saw the Mancusi clip? The suits clip. Yeah. That, he's a fucking garbage pail. <laughs> yeah. It's like, why would you do that? Because people are fucking employed, Mike. Yeah, it's true, Mike. Come on. Um, I don't know. I like I like a good suit, but, you know, that... <laughs> I will say with COVID, now that I've been going back to an office and I've been like leaving the house, uh, going to a gym, going on dates, you know, like I'm I'm realizing because all my clothes are from two and a half years ago mm. and they've just been sitting in the closet and they're all old. So I've been buying a lot of clothes lately. So this is very top of mind um, because I'm actually leaving the house now, but like the clothes that I had are all, they're all old or like, or pajamas. Cause, yeah. Cause I just wore the same sweatpants for two years around my house. Right. Um, that's clinical depression. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that is also. Yeah. I, I sometimes wonder if I have that. Um, I've always been like, no, no, I'm an anxiety guy. Um, oh, is that, is that there a divide? Dude, that's I don't the have thing. depression. I have anxiety. So you even wasped that. How did you wasp <laughs> depression? <laughs> the research says that anxiety and depression are actually t- two sides of the same coin. And there isn't like when people are like, oh, no, like, that's just a bunch of bullshit. I, it's the same thing. Just different manifestation of symptoms. At least that's what the new research is. Saying. That's of uh, New England Journal of Medicine. <laughs> that's you here. here first, baby. There you go. We're breaking this news a, here on the this, Happy this Hour, is folks. A medical podcast. <laughs> that's right. Every we give out medical advice and financial advice, and we're certified in all in, categories. In, in nothing, <laughs> we're certified in open mics. <laughs> Are you still doing stand up? Yeah, hell yeah. How's that going? Oh, it's fucking. Uh, you're over my house on a Tuesday night. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it's going. How's it going? Fucking terrible. Yeah. I had Hardy over Friday. Oh, I had really? Metcalf oh, yeah. over last night. Oh really? How's he doing? Yeah. Which one? Metcalf. You talked to Hardy. Yeah. Metcalf, he came over with a, a thing of beers. <laughs> and he's like, I'm going to the New York Comedy Club Halloween party. Here's a, I have a Pharaoh hat somewhere. It's on that chair from him. Oh, Pharaoh hat. Yeah, he brought over Pharaoh hat. It was that, fun. That feels like appropriation. Did he wear it on video? Oh, yeah. We both wore it for the whole, the whole oh, time. Jesus. I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, <laughs> we're going to have you put on blackface for this episode. Oh, fine. <laughs> <laughs> Um, wait, so yeah, I, yeah, I'm not doing stand up these days. You're, re- you're retired. I, I don't, I don't know what it is. Mm. I mean, the movie's coming out. So like I've done a handful of, I've done a smattering of open mics this year. And then randomly I got a DM from somebody in March and was like, Hey, do you want to do my bar show? And I was like, I literally haven't done stand up in a year and a half. <laughs> you even talk like Hardy now. <laughs> <laughs> You spent so much time with Hardy, you're talking like God him. God <laughs> damn it. Well, part of the problem is my voice is sort of raspy right now. That's and, true. And his voice is a lower register than mine. Yes. So, and I learned this quite extensively because I co-edited my film, and you just watch takes over and over and over again, and I have listened to that man's voice so much. It's a great voice. It's a strong voice. It's a strong voice. It's a strong um, man. But I like him and I are in these scenes together and you start realizing like the different pitches and intonations of your voice. I have a nasally voice. It's just a fact. Well, it is. It is what it is. And like he has this nice like bassy voice. He has a good voice. You know, and um, I don't know. Like I, I'm not saying that my the pitch of my voice or the tenor of my voice is why I'm not doing stand up anymore. But like <laughs> nasal doesn't help. <laughs> Nasally doesn't help your comedy career. That's not what uh, your acting career. That's not what a lot of uh, Jewish comedians would say. Oh my god! <laughs> so, uh, that's almost exclusively what the world's heard for a hundred years. <laughs> Seinfeld didn't have a nasally voice. Woody yeah. Allen though. Woody Allen. <laughs> yes, that's true. Yeah. But yeah, like my voice, like in terms of pitch, because I sang in the choir in high school. Wait, what? I sang in the choir. You look like you you look like you still sing in a choir. I'm a choir boy. <laughs> Were you in an a cappella group in college? I was not in an a cappella group in college. That's surprising. That would have been really fun. I did uh, I did a, I did fraternity life in college though. Mm. So that took up all my time. I did no other activities or societies. Right. I exclusively drank and partied my way through. Which is what you're state. supposed to do. OSU? Um, OSU. There you are. 
if had I like not done that, I probably would have done an acapella group. I probably would have done like an improv group. That would have been fun. That would have been something. Um, would your I'd, dad have still talked to you? <laughs> Yes. Okay. I have a good relationship with my father. That's fine. Yeah, unlike because most, you're in a frat. <laughs> unlike most comics. I'm just kidding. Um, but anyways, how did we get on this? Oh, yeah. So in the choir, they would always put me with the basses because I couldn't sing any high notes. But I always thought I had a higher voice. And I learned that there's differences between uh, voice pitch and then like, I think the other term is like te- temp- temper, timber. Like I have a pitch, like a nasalier voice. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. This isn't it. Kesha? But I, I lost my voice um, over the weekend because I was at a wedding. You're at a wedding. You lost your voice, but you don't drink. I was singing. Were you, did you, were you the entertainment? <laughs> <laughs> no. The DJ was playing really good music, so I was, I was singing along. The and new- also, I found myself talking to someone, and we were talking next to the speaker for like an hour of the reception. Sober. Sober. Hmm. I was, we were texting after and we were like, we should have like gone and sat at a table because my ears are blown out and I can't talk. A little young lady, I'm assuming. It was a young lady. <laughs> It'd be weird if you and another guy were like, we should have fucking sat down we at a table. We should have fucking sat, dude. It's so good to see you. <laughs> yeah. At the wedding. Um, but anyways, I, I can't talk like, uh, or uh, I can't really hear out of my ears to hundred percent. You're falling today. apart, man. Yeah. It's not good. You got no voice. You threw your back out doing yoga. We weren't going to bring that up, but yes, I did. It's brought up. Rich and I were supposed to podcast last week and I was like, I'm day to day. I gave you a baseball injury. <laughs> I know. I felt like I was doing like fantasy podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> I checked my lineup. Pomeroy's questionable. <laughs> questionable. You know what I love about hockey? Is they never disclose the injury. They'll just be like, give me a hockey player. I, I'm not familiar. Fucking Ovechkin. They'll be like, Ovechkin is questionable upper body. Yeah, figure <laughs> it out. <laughs> or like, uh, Panarin is day to day lower body. Yeah. They never give you like knee, ankle. Um, I don't know. I like in football where. They'll say it's like the wrist, and then they'll put a cast on the right wrist, but really, it's the left wrist. Oh, really? And they're like, I fooled you, and it's like, you fooled me. You broke your wrist, and That's you're perfect. hurting it more. Speaking of wrists in football, oh. with the quarterbacks, they have like the plays on their wrist. They do. Is that a computer? Like yeah, you, that thing you, they're you, punching in? You sang choir in high school. I didn't play football. That's for sure. I can tell you that, but no, it's not a computer. It's a, it's an index card. Oh, it's an index yeah. card. Yeah, I thought they were punching in stuff. You thought they were punching in codes in the wrist? Yeah, they're looking up plays. They're punching. They in had it in the eighties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, but one would think with the times they've evolved. It's an index card. It's an index card. That is so lame. Then the coach is in their ear. They got a mic in the helmet. Okay, they got okay. So they got a mic in the home. There's some tech. Yeah, well, yeah. There's some tech, and they're like, "Oh, it's a uh, Ray Lincoln 42," and they're like, "All right, Red Lincoln 42." Oh, it's uh, all right. Here we go. Because I've been thinking about a lot of this stuff. Because I w- I've been watching the playoff baseball this year. Okay. Because um, I'm a I'm a big Cleveland Guardians guy. Ugh. <laughs> did you see how I did that? Yeah. Like, it's like uh, it's like we had to dub it in. Uh, what I like is <laughs> that's how that's how I know you spend a lot of time editing. Uh, <laughs> I like when you watch a Guardians game. I mean I watch it when the Yankees play them, so I'm not gonna act like I'm watching exclusively Guardians. Sure. But you watch a Guardians game and the entire stadium is wearing Indian stuff. <laughs> I know. <laughs> What they should have done is done a, a drive, like turn in your your old racist gear, <laughs> and then get a new get get a new gear. They should have done a drive. Instead, all the fans show up in the old gear. Right. And you can't like blur out the whole stadium. No. Well, it'd be good. This is what would have solved it. It's really it. funny though because they pan the crowd and everyone's wearing the old gear. Dude, it's everyone. In fact, so I had I had an Indians jersey. I sold it on Poshmark. Oh, and I listed it for ninety dollars, which is about what I paid. Um, someone bought it for ninety five dollars, and I'm convinced they did because they paid above asking because it had a Chief Wahoo logo on it. You should have that could have cost. And it it sold like a day after the team changed the name, and I was like, oh, this is just a race. <laughs> yes, yeah. 
he wanted the, the it, it grew in value. Uh, Cleveland Indians jersey with Chief Wahoo. That's that's like a Picasso. <laughs> that's like a racist Picasso. Oh no! <laughs> yeah. oh, you could have no. really sold that for a good amount. Yeah, I probably. I, but you know, it's like I I couldn't make too much profit. I even the that, that felt like blood money. I really should have do- donated it. Do you think if they changed Chief Wahoo's name at all would have been okay? I mean, that's a crazy name. The fact that they, they, Chief Wahoo's crazy. That's crazy. The fact that they were getting away with that. I mean, that was because it was a slow progression. They stopped using Wahoo. I mean, that's insane. I even just saying it. Just say Chief. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you have to say Chief Wahoo? <laughs> like, <laughs> you just feel like you're saying a bad word when it's on your tongue. But they got rid of that, and then they and they got rid of the logo off the jersey. Yes. Which was a red-faced man, insane, and then, then finally they changed the team name. It was like a three. They did a phase out. They did a phase out. It's like why not just rip the bandaid off? Like so, for three years, all the fans were just like, it was a very even divide. Like there were people like me who were just like, okay, no, there were three. There were three subsets. There was okay. like the hyper woke who were like, we need to change this right now. And I would say that was probably less than 10% of the fan base. Yep. Which is what it's it just, is. it's Ohio. Then <laughs> exactly. Then there was like another 50% that was just like, let's just go with the times. We don't really care. Guardians. Woo. That's the camp I was in. Like whatever. Um, I get it, but I also wasn't, I, it, I admittedly was not on the front lines for it for better or for worse. We assume. And then there was the other 40% that was like vehemently against the <laughs> over game. my dead body. And these are the guys that are buying the old gear on Poshmark. Yep. <laughs> and, and that they're panning to in the stadium. So in the first like few games of the guardian season this year, they would, the cameraman would like really hustle to find people in the new gear. <laughs> and they were doing these quick cutaways <laughs> Because, like, some guy would pop into the frame with the Wahoo. Yeah. You know? So, um, shout out to the, the cameraman over there. <laughs> Doing God's work. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yet, you still have the Browns. Yeah, I don't know what that's a reference to. Yeah, what's to. going on over there? I'm not a big NFL football guy, so I'm not going right. to speak out of turn on something I don't know about. But I will say the Browns organization are an absolute disaster. They, I mean, they're, they're well, paying yeah. Deshaun all this money, and they knew about all this shit um he is good though (laughs) yeah he's a sex offender and will he ever get arrested we don't know but it's boy can he He has a football has he not been arrested i i have no that's insane but uh, i think aren't there like 30 women documented i think one came out like three four weeks ago like an additional one oh my god it's not stopping yeah i mean the fact that like and all his contract is guaranteed money yeah it's it, it like it's almost impossible to be a Browns fan. Like even last night they beat the Bengals on Monday Night Football, which like you know as a hater of Bengals fans, like that's like kind of the rivalry in Ohio. Right. Like I can't even really enjoy it because of all the um, hullabaloo. The hullabaloo. Um, assault would be the. That's the, the hullabaloo. <laughs> that, yeah. Um, not to understate it, but yeah. What's it's hard to be an Ohio sports fan of late. What's uh? What do people in Ohio think of Cincinnati? Is it Kentucky? <laughs> <laughs> so Cincinnati's interesting. Um, <clears throat> a lot of people in Cincinnati are very fine people, wonderful people. But then there's a lot of people in Cincinnati that associate themselves with the South, even though Cincinnati not only is in the North categorically, um, but also was a a haven on the Underground Railroad because it was right across the Confederate border. Ah, so there were like there's all these there's like a museum down there about the um, the Underground Railroad in Cincinnati. Interesting. Um, but yet there are like really like ultra conservative uh, people in Cincinnati who like like will like display you like you'll see Confederate flags like when you're driving around there, even though it was in the Union. It's very confusing. Yeah, but it's over the river. <laughs> It's close enough. I will say the Cincinnati airport is in the is in Kentucky. Right. Um, but Cincinnati's fine. Uh, it's it's very like the bones of the city are good. Like the, it's got like a big downtown. They've shot a lot of movies there. Interesting. I think one of the Captain of Americas was shot there because the, the old the downtown looks like it. Like if you just took a couple streets, you could fake it for New York. You know what I mean? Interesting. Because there's tall buildings and it's okay. narrow streets, and then um and then. Outside, the movie Carol was shot there, which has Rooney Mara and Kate Blanchett. 
I don't know. It's I like Kate Blanchett, but yeah, it's they, it's a um, it's a fifties lesbian romance period drama. Of Kyle course. Chandler from Friday Night Lights is in it. No, he plays the husband who's mad about his wife actually just being a lesbian. Yeah, <laughs> so and just, he still plays Coach Taylor, <laughs> and it's it's very Coach Taylor. He'll just be like, none of that now. You know? Yeah, <laughs> it's, just, it's great. It's actually a phenomenal film. But anyways. Shot in Cincinnati, even though it's set in the New Jersey suburbs. Interesting. So, because the Cincinnati suburbs kind of have these beautiful rolling hills, like it's very. It's Kentucky. Kentucky's got the rolling hills, the rolling hills. black fences. Yeah, I mean, but Cincinnati, you know, it's it's all right. It's all right. Okay, I don't know. I know Skyline Chill. Skyline Chili is is something. Um, it's a. I, I like it. I like the chili dogs, but there's this thing called the three way. Have you heard of this? No, I, I haven't. Go on. You hear about this, people? No, it's it's like a pasta, and then they put the chili sauce. Oh, it's called the three the way. It's called a three way, and I don't like it. I knew about that. Yeah. I didn't know it was called a three way. It's called a three. That's a very trashy name yeah. for that. If yeah, I do. We should fact check that. That's what it's called because I'm not the biggest. Guy we don't fact guy. check here. <laughs> Well, there's so many more important things we should have fact check in the yeah. past 118 episodes. The, the only reason I say that is because like Cincinnati people are very protective of Skyline, and I'm I don't want to mis- misrepresent it. You know, like I have an image to uphold. <laughs> yeah, in Ohio. <laughs> um, I'm I'm kidding. I don't really care. Um, yeah, but I don't know. I'm Columbus. It's kind of its own thing, but it's close. Yeah, you got the Columbus crew. Columbus crew. That's how you know you really got nothing. <laughs> when the MLS team there is a big deal. Yeah. Well, it's kind of Columbus. I always tell people it's a, it's sort of like a made up city. Like in, my dad grew up there and like in the 50s and 60s, it was f- like farmland with like a little town. I imagine. And then there was a college there. And then it's grown into this, you know, kind of decent sized, mid sized city, a couple million people. Um, but there's no like, there's not really like a real history to it, like Detroit, you know, the auto industry. You know what I mean? Isn't it the capital of Ohio? It is the capital. How about that? How about that, people? Um, but yeah, like it doesn't have the same history that some of the other Midwestern cities, like Detroit, Pittsburgh, Chicago. It's it's newer. Is Ohio Midwest? Ohio is the Midwest. This Hawthorne is Hawthorne Heights. It's from Ohio. Ohio's for lovers. Yeah. As Hawthorne Heights once said. Were you a screamo guy? Shit, yeah, bro. Yeah. I was talking to a buddy yesterday about the used. Yeah, yeah. You want to talk about the used? We can talk about the used. I don't really. I only know the one song, "The Taste of Ink." Oh wow, yeah. You're you're not, but like, an emo kid. Yeah, if you don't know, oh no, I'm not an emo. Yeah, kid. no. I saw My Chemical Romance like a month ago. Oh, how was that? Sick. Oh, I listened to them growing up. Yeah, yeah dude. Helen. I was blackout. I was so drunk, <laughs> and I could realize that Gerard Way, the lead singer, was even drunker than me. That's how, that's, I was like, this is the best thing in the how world. How old are they now? Ooh, 40 in that ballpark. He was just wearing short shorts on stage, anni- annihilated, slurring wow. the words, and it was a blast. Did they play with anybody from that era? Not, uh, not at the concert we went to, but like Taking Back Sunday open for them, I think the show after. Oh, wow. I'm a big Taking Back Sunday fan because they're Long Island. They are. They are. I've seen them countless times. That's hilarious. Where in Long Island did you grow up? Syosset. Syosset. A lot of people. Judd Apatow from there? Judd Apatow is from Syosset. Yeah. Started the radio station. A little Syosset history for you. Have you guys ever said what up like on a, during a trip home for the holidays? No. Run into him? <laughs> I don't think he, because uh, his mom lived there. I don't think she lived there anymore. Judd Apatow and Natalie Portman is also from Syosset. Natalie Portman's from Syosset? That's oh. right. And... You, if you want a third, the Todd from Scrubs. Oh, um, fucking who's wait? Who? Which one's Todd? Is that the one Zach that always Braff? asks for a high five? That's not Zach Braff. Yeah, it's not Zach Braff. Oh, I like I like Zach Braff. Zach Braff's fantastic. I've never seen. I've never really seen Scrubs though. Do you know who Zach Braff's uh, stepsister is? Isn't Jessica Kirsten? It is Jessica Kirsten. Yeah, yeah, she's great. Yeah, she's, she's great. fantastic. Um, Lesbian, like the movie. <laughs> No, I, I um. So, are you a Mets fan then? Is the, for Yankees Long Island Yankees fan? A Yankees fan. Okay, Yankees that's right. Fan. That's right. Yeah, you were saying because aren't a lot of Long Island people Mets or is it split? Uh, yeah. If you want to generalize it, <laughs> I do. Yeah, sure. Isn't Long, that what the half hour is all about? Generalizing. Well, we could get a little more specific with our generalization. <laughs> like, yeah, Long Island because the Mets and the Jets used to play at Shea Stadium. 
That's right. So if you're like a Queens, Long Island person, you're usually a Mets Jets fan. Okay. And then since the Giants and Yankees played in Yankee Stadium, historically, everyone else is a fan of them. I see. But then you could get into like ethnicities. Oh. Like Jews, stereotypically, are Mets fans. This I have heard. Yes. Uh, Asians, Mets fans for some reason. Huh. Koreans and Chinese, usually. The Japanese, Yankees fans. Is that so? Yeah. I have no... I have no understanding why. I Matsui, maybe, for the Yankees? Was he ever oh, Yankee? No. Hideki Matsui? Hideki, of course. He won the 2009 World Series. Oh, he was on the 2009 team. Okay. What about, so yeah, I'm Irish and Italian. Where do they go? You will probably be a Yankees fan. Interesting. Yes, yes, yes. Here's but you I, could be a Mets. Here's why I'm thinking Mets, because I like an underdog. Hmm. I like an underdog. Story. It's really all where, it would all be based off where you live then. Yeah, I've been I've because I want to I've lived in New York for almost six years now, um, and I'm I'm pro I don't know if I'm here for good, but I'm here I'm here for a long time. You're gonna you know? be here. I've I've looked into the L.A. thing a couple times. The driving makes me want to die. It's too much. It's so bad. It's a lot. <laughs> and like the beach and the weather and it, it it's all amazing and everyone's very healthy and I'm into all that hippy dippy. Yeah, but they suck. Shit. A little bit. Yeah. I kind of, I kind of drink Kool Aid on that side. All but, right. but the the traffic actually makes me want to blow my brains. I love New York. I love being able to walk places. So I'm gonna be here for a while, and I need to adopt some sports teams. Okay. And I can't stand the Yankees. Sorry to the listeners. It's what um, it is. It is what it is. You grow up a Guardians fan. We've had some tough series with you guys over the years. You're gonna abandon Cleveland. No, I'm still going to be a Guardians fan, but I think I need to root for the Mets because they're in the National League, so it's not as much cross-pollination. Yeah. Maybe one interleague series every couple years. That's fine. That's fine. And I, f I have found that the Mets fans are, um, well, they're less abrasive when I go to the games. And maybe it's because I'm wearing Cleveland stuff when I go to the Yankees games, but I'm getting yelled Probably. at. Probably, yeah. Getting <laughs> Yeah, Yankees, you got a bunch of like working class Italian Irish people screaming at you. They are screaming. Dominicans screaming at you. <laughs> yeah. And the 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 one Mets game I've I've went to, now granted I was in a suite, but every no one was no one was yelling. Well, yeah, you were in the suite. You were having did you eat sushi in the suite? There was sushi yeah. in the suite. And they had these little mini cheeseburgers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so nice. I've done it. Nah, I'm familiar with the sweet life, Zach I, and Cody. I've only done the suite a couple times in my entire life, but I got to say, the whoever came up with the mini cheeseburger, it's like, hey, we know this isn't that healthy. You're a Sliders fan? But it's mini. Oh, the best is a chicken slider? <clears throat> Don't judge me. What the hell's going on here? <laughs> Are you a White Castle guy? That started no, in Ohio, did it not? I, it is also a Columbus company. I have never been to White Castle. You, you grew really? up pretty fancy. <laughs> <laughs> no, we were just a Wendy's family. Inter exclusively Wendy's? Nine times out of ten, if we were getting fast food, it was Wendy's. But you didn't get it that often. I could tell by your voice. Well, when I was playing travel basketball, it was a lot of Wendy's. Okay. I'm in the car. Yes. Um, but, no, not... <laughs> We would get it sometimes, but like over the years, the the parents pushed. They were they were trying to do a little less Wendy's. I don't know if it was a health thing, or they were like like Chipotle got invented. Yeah, that when and Chipotle came along. Yeah, dude. So when Chipotle first came out, at least in Columbus, can't speak for New York, a burrito was five ninety five. What are you like an eighty year old? That's <laughs> How much was milk? <laughs> <laughs> And milk was a nickel. Yeah, what are you talking and about? And then we took the trolley. <laughs> Uphill both ways. No, um, dude, that reminds me. I watched the clip of you and Elliot talking about milk. Yes. I was also a daily milk drinker. You were also doing daily milk? I was doing daily milk. Sometimes I would have two glasses of milk at dinner. Yo! Because I was in high school, I was really into sports and lifting weights. <laughs> I my bench press max was was in high school. I don't think I'll ever get to that. Well, I mean, because I'm not hard, gonna say how much, but how, well, now you got to say how much. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna do it. How much was it? I got. I did one rep of two thirty five. That's not bad for yeah. a high school basketball player. It's pretty good. JV, JV, <laughs> not even varsity. All right, uh, I I got cut after that. That's what. It um, is. But no, they. Um, 
I, I don't think I could ever, I don't think I'll ever lift that much again because I have like back problems. So, hey, you can't even do yoga. <laughs> I heard it. <laughs> Nevertheless, a deadlift. Dude, I'm going to physical therapy. From yoga? No. Well, I mean, I hurt, I hurt my back like running and lifting and the combination. Yoga was just the final straw. I, I you. did one pyramid pose and I went down. <laughs> um, but anyways, um, what were we saying? Pyramid pose, yoga, you hurt your back, drinking milk. Oh, yeah, <laughs> drinking milk. Yeah, I used to drink like two glasses of milk a day because it was all this protein. And I, I don't know if we knew much about like nutrition, but like I was taking the, like it was called On Optimum Nutrition. Yeah, Optimum Nutrition yeah. Whey Protein, yes. Optimum Nutrition Whey Protein. I was taking like a scoop of that yes. with, with milk. Yeah. Not with water. Whereas like now when I do take protein after I work out, but like I take like a vegan protein powder and I put it in water. Oh, like pea protein? It's, it's, uh, I think it actually still is optimum nutrition, oh, okay, okay. but it's, it's like they're vegan. Yeah, bullshit. Because like is whey bad for you? Nobody knows. Nobody knows any of this shit. Well, whey is just whatever on top of, when you open a yogurt, <laughs> Yeah. the stuff on top of that's whey. And what's curds? Because they talk about curds and whey. Curds are, uh, you're from the Midwest. It's a curd. You know, it's like a solid form. <laughs> Come on, Culver's. Eating your curds and what? Oh, Culver's is good. There you go. That's a Midwest thing. Speaking of the curds, let's get into the Middle Eastern conflict. I was going to say, <laughs> so say, what you want to talk about? Turkey? <laughs> the Armenian genocide? What the fuck I like, you want to talk I about like here? That real quick on the curds because I don't want to get get into things. You have, curd, you have hot takes on the curds? They <laughs> How old are you? You're talking about what the price of a burrito was and the Kurds. I just remember during the conflict with uh, ISIS, like there was this huge um, like media push to be like, why aren't we ar- arming the Kurds? Because <laughs> like the Kurds were sort of an ally in the region, right? But like the Kurds also were like, you know, anti women, anti, you know what I mean? Like it's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. What are we supposed to so like Twitter agree was, with everyone? Twitter was freaking out because it was just like, well, if you arm the Kurds, it means all this bullshit. It's just like there's no good options over Yeah, there, at the time we also had Coney 2012 and, oh. you know, what was Coney 2012? Something with child soldiers. Oh. Call us in if you if you remember. I'm not touching that. But anyways, on the protein, um, yeah, now, like I literally, I put like blueberries and spinach in my protein shake. Oh my and God. I, I I use water or almond milk. Oh, I it's, can tell my dad's going to text me, this kid's a Democrat. It's so <laughs> <laughs> well, sir, you'd be correct. It's the most, like, <sighs> it, it is not, nothing about this shake exudes strength. No. You know, whereas in high school, it was like. Might make you weaker. Two glasses. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of calories you burn for yeah, making, yeah. I got to pick the berries. That's right. <laughs> But like in high school, it was like, no, we're gonna drink optimum nutrition. Yes, two scoops. We we would put ice cream in it. Yes, disgusting. Yeah, that's what we were doing. Back, people are still doing it, by the way. Really? Oh yeah, <laughs> huge. Yeah, I would do that in in high school also. But the thing is, you were uh, you're an in shape thin. You're naturally a thinner person. A little bit. Where at the time I was like three hundred pounds, and I was like, I got a bulk. I always forgot forget you were a fat kid. Yeah, big, big, big fatty. But you know what I found out about Hardy? Was we he brought a fat this kid? up. Fr- not that he was a fat kid. We brought this up Friday. He would have ice cream cake and milk. <laughs> oh my god! And this was post dinner with milk. See, this is what I would like to know about the human body. Yes, and someone needs to do a research study on this. Is like what happens at age twenty seven ish? Where how old are you? Twenty nine. I think we're me, the same age. Me too. Yeah. You're 93. 93. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What happens at 27 where your body's just like, I'm not going to process dairy anymore? Because I find- Are you going that, through that? I'm going through this right now. Like over the last couple of years, if I have too much cheese pizza, let alone if I have any amount of ice cream the next day, I will be on the toilet. Like I don't say that to gross the listeners out, but like my body just- I, it's, I can't do it. Like I can't process large amounts of dairy. Whereas like in high school, it would be like- I could I could eat a tub of ice cream and be like shitting solid, you know what I mean? Right. I think your body has now realized that you're a Democrat. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it must I must be vegan. I, you know, I will say I've tried the vegan thing, and it's tough. It's it's so also not healthy. Yeah, I mean, it's 
Oh, well, I would just like to say, I don't think, now I am not a nutritionist. Let's put the asterisks there. I am a, I'm a, I'm a semi-pro writer and director. It's what it is. Semi-pro. There was a premiere. There's there two premieres. Columbus premiere and New York premiere. We're still waiting on some festivals, but we've been doing some festivals. Okay, we're going to do fest. Um, but I am a semi-professional filmmaker. That is the extent of my professional qualification. There that is. But. <laughs> All right. I don't think anyone really knows what we're talking about when it comes to nutrition. Because everyone on every side of every fence has their points. And I'm so gullible and a, uh, I'm very impressionable. Yes. <laughs> to the point that, like, I can't consume any of their content because I will just start believing and I don't know who's right. Well, let me fill you in. As a retired scientist, I could tell you. The reason why people have different opinions all over the place is because they're all stupid. <laughs> and they don't run studies correct, especially nutritionists and uh, exercise scientists. Is that right? Both of them are very dumb people. <laughs> and they don't know how to run a study. And that's why like, no one actually knows what's going on. Yeah. Because, like, I mean, you, you talk to the ve the vegans make some strong points. Like, they're out here. I, I've seen the documentaries. You know? Have you ever seen a thin vegan, though? I don't know a thin vegan. I have, yeah. I don't know There's any. They're all eating avocados. <laughs> There's a vegan at my office who's very thin. Huh. But he's also, like, a triathlete. There you go. There you go. All right. But then you, you sometimes you see these people on Instagram. They're like, all I eat is meat. Oh uh, yeah, that's you shouldn't do that either. That that just seems crazy. Yeah, but like it's like I'm sitting here and I'm just like I don't know who's right because I'm not a science guy. Um, John Mulaney had this joke in his new hour at MSG. I went and saw it this year. It was really funny. It was like it was like in regards to science, the the bit was just like it's none of our business. We shouldn't ask questions. Like he was talking about space and shit. Yeah, I I kind of agree with that philosophy. Um, cause I can't figure it out. And then I just get confused and then I just end up going to Chipotle cause I, I thought we were still talking about space, but yes, yeah. space too. Space too. I get too. confused and I end up going to Chipotle. <laughs> yeah, just go to Chipotle. Speaking of which, so I go to Chipotle today. Oh, you went to Chipotle today. Why Chipotle talk? All right. I go into Chipotle. Are you a Chipotle or Dos Toros guy? Eh, I, you know, if we looked at the credit card statement, I'm definitely going to Chipotle more. There you go. I do like Dos Toros. All right. Um... That's a hard question. If I get all the mix-ins, like everything I want, cheese, sour cream, I'm going to lean Dos Toros. You're doing cheese, sour cream, and you're lactose intolerant. I know. I'm, yeah. I'm going, you're a hero. I'm going against the grain. <laughs> um, but I go into Chipotle, and right when I walk in, this guy goes up to me, and he just goes, excuse me, sir, very forcefully. And uh, I was just like, oh, boy. no. And then he goes, um, he goes like, you know, can I... He's like, can I ask you a question? I'm like, uh, and I homeless I, fella. Honestly, I don't even know. I made the mistake of going, yeah, what's up? <laughs> if uh, listen, listeners, wait, what are we online? Are we walking into Chipotle? I guess I, what's the I'm scenario? I'm walking into Chipotle and I'm about to get online, and there's probably 35 people in, online. Jeebus creepus! It was lunch rush, and it's the Chipotle right ex right next to the the St. Anne's School in Brooklyn Heights. So there's all these like fucking sixteen year olds in there, and then a bunch of city workers because I, I live near the um the Department of Education and all that shit. Brad Pitt's kids go there, I think. No, yes. yeah, there's like a like I've seen Steve Nash with his kids out there. Not anymore. Oh, really? Is he not? He on got the fired scene? today. I mean, he got swept by the Celtics. That's what it is. And did not seem to care. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyways, I mean, that was a trash series. Also, if any, what are the, what are the Brooklyn Nets? Let's be real. Um, uh, they're there. They're there. If I see someone in New York with Nets gear, you either better be from New Jersey or else you're a phony. Right. Or you're homeless and it was free. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I shouldn't have laughed at that. It's so true. It's what it is. Yeah. Listen, it's what it is. It's, um, but yeah, I mean... But I, I have adopted the Knicks going back to our earlier conversation. Okay. You're not a, a Cavs guy. I mean, it was fun when they had LeBron. You yeah. Know? But come on. Okay. No, I, I'm not disagreeing. <laughs> anyway, so I'm in Chipotle. I walk, I'm about to walk online. This guy's like, excuse me, let me ask you a question. And I made the mistake of going, what's up? And he goes, can I ask you what your religion is? I had a feeling. And I just start, I just looked down and I shook my head. Because I don't want to get into religion with anyone, let alone the homeless man. Actually, I don't know if it, what this. I'm just going to call him the stranger at Chipotle. 
because I don't know his housing status. Um, but then he goes, I, I study Scientology. And, oh. And I was like, I kind of nod. And then he started saying some gibberish. I honestly don't remember what he said. And then he swung at me. No way! But he swung right in front of my face. That's not a very Scientologist thing to do. And then he, because he said something about like, will you get me something to eat? And I was just like. That has oh, nothing man. to do with Scientology. Yeah, he said something about Scientology. Then he said, will you get me something to eat? I shook my head. And then he swung a punch right across in front of my face. Did not hit me, but came very close. All right. He was clearly punching not to hit. That was the, that was clearly the intent. Okay. And I was just like, Jesus Christ, what the fuck, man? And like 10 people online looked. Another 30 people in the restaurant did not look because this is New York. And yeah. We, we mind our business here in New York. Um, but me and then the lady in front of me, we both walked out of line. We walked out of the store. Yeah. Because I was just like, if I stay online, I'm going to get punched in the face. <laughs> I'm going to bet this guy was homeless. <laughs> that's my bet on this. Oh, no. Oh, good. That's the whole point of Scientology. They'll pay for your food. Yeah, so then I, it, it turned it. <laughs> he brings up an interesting point. That's like, well, Scientology, my understanding is they, it's in the religion, they, they guilt you into things. So maybe well, I think he, that's just religion. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like they get blackmail on you and then they use that to like. That is, uh, I guess, you, did you also watch Leah Remini? No, but I watched Going Clear. The oh, Going Clear, all very good, very good doc. Yeah, good doc, people. Yeah, watch the Leah Remedy uh, series. Leah Remedy. Leah Remedy. You know who Leah Remedy is? I don't know. Seriously, I don't get out. Much. King of Queens. Uh, that was her big hit. King of Queens. Okay. Yeah, the wife of Doug. oh, she's the wife of King yeah, of Queens. Yeah, yeah. Huh. she grew up a like a gigantic Scientologist, and her whole come up, she was supposed to be like a Travolta ish. Oh. Person, and then she realized she she went clear. And then she went clear. Um, but yeah, I mean, in my understanding uh, of the basic premise of some people's bastardization of Scientology—not to be a Scientology apologist—but I think my understanding is they do this auditing process, and they get you to admit stuff, and then they then use the stuff you've admitted to like as leverage for you to then recruit more members. That's how I understand. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I forgot what the test name is, but yeah. Essentially. Auditing. Uh, it might be auditing. Which might is be. hilarious. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so then I, I leave the Chipotle, and like there's there's a ton of kids in this Chipotle. So I'm thinking like, okay, there's a man in there who's maybe dangerous, but maybe not, because he didn't actually punch me. No, but you know what not dangerous people don't do? <laughs> Swing punches in front of people's face. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So it um it got me thinking. I was like, who I was like, who of authority do I talk to right now? Because I was like, I'm not going back into the Chipotle to talk to the manager because then I'm trapped. Because the guy is between the manager and the door. So if I'm talking to the manager, my back is to the guy, and then I might not be able to get through. Okay. So if I talk to the manager and then they have to deal with the guy. Then I'm caught in the. I might not. I might be in a hostage situation. This is after you left. This is after I left. Okay. So I'm thinking through. I'm like, yeah, you can't go back in because if you're back in there with that guy, you might be in there with that guy until the police show up, and then that's just going to become an ordeal. Right. And then I'm thinking, okay, well, I'm around Borough Hall. Like maybe I can find a random officer to like go tell them. But then it sets off this internal debate, given the events of the last couple of years related to the police, like. Would I be being a Karen if I were to bring an officer into the mix? Because technically, I don't think a crime has been committed. Eh. I don't know if I fully agree with that. I would um, say that's harassment. It was harassment of some form. But I did, I did see a cop on my block. All right. So I told him about what happened. I didn't ask him to do anything, but I told him about it. And then this cop gave me the most victim blamey response of all time. He was just like, he was like, well, this is why you got to mind your own business. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? The guy came up to me. He was like, describe your interaction. I was like, well, this guy up came up to me and said, excuse me, sir. And then he said, can I ask you a question? And the cop was like, well, then what did you say? I said, what's up? <laughs> he was like, there you go. That and you know what? The cops 100% the cop correct. Was like you fucked up. <laughs> yeah. When you see a you know when a person's crazy or not. I know. Initially. 
I know. And this, I, I don't know if it's my Midwestern programming or what, but when someone says to me, excuse me, he called me sir. They all call you sir. He said, excuse me, sir. May I ask you a question? So I said yes. And within 15 seconds, I almost got punched in the face. Yeah, that's not, what happens. Not exactly how a sir would be treated. He didn't say he's a sir. He said you're a sir. I know, but if I'm being called sir, why am I almost being punched in the face? Something tells me this guy also tried to open the door for you. No, he did not. Oh, he wasn't one of those. But he was waiting right at the door. <laughs> oh, he was at the door. He was at the door. You don't just do, uh, do pickup? Normally, I do pickup. Normally, I don't even go to the Chipotle. I go to the one in Cobble Hill because there's less crazy people. <laughs> yeah, well, as and we've learned. Namely, you also just don't have to deal with all the school kids. And yeah, I normally do pickup, but lately on pickup they've been scrimping. They skimp. Is it skimp or scrimp? It's a thousand percent skimp. Well, they're skimping. All right. Um, scrimp. I, I think it's just a variation on scrimp. All right. Regardless, I've been going. This this isn't important. I don't know. I, sometimes I've been going in and going through the line. I think they give you more food when you go through the line. I. Can't disagree because you're there. You're there. They can't. They can't just do that to you right in front of your face. Exactly. When you're out of sight, out of mind, they're just doing a half a they're scoop a- and <laughs> they're just going through the motions. Yeah, but I think their Protestant guilt sets in. <laughs> yeah, that's how I know you grew up in Ohio. When the first thing you think of is Protestant, I don't even know what a Protestant I was, is. I was raised Catholic, but um, I, well, I don't know what the difference is. Protestant guilt is like it's it's sort of like an American value. Okay. Like like they that's like kind of like um you know rugged individualism and rugged individualism is considered a traditionally American value. Okay. Um what else? Are you from an area where like Catholics and Protestants didn't get along? No, but I I mean I went to Catholic school. Are so there like people would schools? sort of make jokes and be like, "Oh, the Methodists or the Lutherans or the Episcopalians." Yo, you're fucking white. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Dude. What? I don't know what the difference between any of those is. Honestly, I don't either. <laughs> it's just inherited inner Christianity factionalism. Um, but anyways, on, uh, yeah, the, um, oh, what were we saying? Um, Protestant. Protestant guilt. That's like, uh, like, have you heard of the Protestant work ethic? I don't know anything about Protestants. But the Protestant work ethic is like this idea from the 1600s of like, you work six days a week from sunup to sundown, and on Sunday you rest. And, like, it's kind of the idea, like, your reward will be great in heaven. You know what I right, mean? Right, right. Like, and it's sort of, it's this sort of puritanical idea. Um, and some people think that in today's day and age with, you know, capitalism, like, we're still kind of shedding some of that ethos in our culture today. Cause, okay. Because, you know. Not gonna lie, the forty-hour work week's kind of nice. Like I like getting getting off at five. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not um, bad. Europe six-week vacation. That actually sounds kind of nice. Not bad. <laughs> Got to bail the asses out of a few wars, but yeah. the pro- but the Protestant work ethic and therefore Protestant guilt when you don't totally conform to that is kind of what that is. And, gotcha. Um, yeah, I don't know how we got on this, but people sk- uh, scrimping at. Oh yeah, so I think their guilt sets in. Okay. Um, when they see you in person, I do think so. I don't think you're wrong with this. Yeah, I've talked to Luciano about this this work ethic concept. Yeah, well, he grew up real. Uh, his dad still does a Bible study. I met Tom's dad. You met Tom's dad? Yeah, we um we screened the rest of your life. That's the first plug. No, I tried to movie. get uh, tickets. We're uh, and, 50 minutes in. That's the first time I dropped the movie title. That's there you go. Good. I was trying to go the whole pod without saying it. Well, I went to go buy ticks for the premiere. Sold out. Sold out premiere. There you go. Congrats. And Delica Film Center. Thank you. It was a lot of fun. Um, but so we screened the film at uh, the Coney Island Film Festival. Interesting. Which sounds hilarious, but it was because <laughs> it's Coney Island and that's sort of in the lexicon. Right. Incredible film festival. Where was it? It was on Coney Island. Why well, would it at, like, assume? This, they have this thing called like the Seaside Museum. Perfect. It was so well run. I guess it's like the 25th annual and... It they was, know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. I mean, this thing was a well-oiled machine. It was a truly a beautiful film festival. I watched some incredible films. There was a film with Kevin Bacon in it. Really? It was a delightful film festival. All like, right. The horror block was great. I like a good horror. Okay. Um, but anyways, uh, Tom's parents came to the screening. That, oh, that's that nice. Screening. Yeah. So I got to meet Tom's family. They were, 
I mean, they were seeing their son act on screen. Right. Um, I would love to meet the Lucianos. They were... I feel like they're very average. They were very kind people. I would imagine so. Well, he's God-fearing the dad, and his mom's Greek. <laughs> <laughs> so I would imagine they're very nice people. What I will say about that screening and really all of the screenings so far is that like, there's something very nice about the communal experience of watching a film together. Wasn't well, that the whole point? That's the whole point. And like, look... I think streaming is great. In fact, you can pre-order the movie right now. <laughs> if you want to. Amazon? It's on Apple to start. And then That's it'll be bad. on Amazon at around Christmas time. Okay. Um, but the point, like, I love going to the theater. I like when they when they hit play on the projector, that sucker is not stopping until it's over. Right. And this, like, watching a movie at home, like, while it's convenient, you can go to the bathroom, you can text, you can do whatever, like... That's not really how, like, that's not how the art form was to be. That's not how, that's not how it's supposed to be. You know what I mean? Like, and look, you know, you can't stop the advent of technology, but like watching a movie on your couch where you can press pause and go to the bathroom and check your phone and take a shit, like, that's not what we're It goes against the whole thing. And as a director. Yeah. I'm in charge of the pacing of the movie and people are pressing pause. It's. So and that's the the most fun part about the screening is like we're all locked in, you know. And it's not a long movie; it's eighty one minutes. That's not long. No, it's very short. Um, I just saw Bros. Oh, I loved Bros. I did like Bros. It was very good, but it was very long. It was a little on the longer side, I guess. I will say that's the hardest I've laughed in a movie theater since I saw This Is the End, the James Franco and Seth Rogen end of the world comedy. Okay. Dying laughing at bros. I was gonna say bros is better than this is the end. Oh, it's it's better, yeah. Yeah. And besides like a half hour of like, yeah, we didn't really need this. You could cut <laughs> you could cut this out. Yeah, I but I knew bros was gonna be good. Now there's a lot on Twitter and in the media about like, oh, bros should have had a bigger opening or bros didn't because of that. All that's just noise to me. I saw bros, I laughed so fucking hard. It was great. And I knew it was gonna be great because that director he directed Forgetting Sarah Marshall, which is one of my favorite comedies of all time. Nicholas Stoller. Yes, it wasn't as good as Forgetting Sarah Marshall. It was not, but it was. It but was, it was very good. It was certainly just as funny. I think Forgetting Sarah Marshall for me resonated more because, like, you know, like Bros was like a classic rom com, top to bottom. There's right. like a meet cute. Yes, yes. There's yes. a little montage in Providence, Massachusetts. Is it Providence? Providence. Town. Providence Town. What did I say? Providence. Providence. It's also a city. Also said in Rhode Island, less gay. <laughs> yeah. Province Town. Yeah. Is a, Pro- it might a be gay Providence haven. Town. Call us in. Call us in. All the gay listeners, call <laughs> us in. I think it's Province. P Town is what they call it's it. It's definitely called P Town. P Town is what I've seen. Um, but yeah, they had the P Town montage. Yeah. Like it's a it's a classic rom com through and through, whereas like Forgetting Sarah Marshall was more this like personal story. Yes. And like if you've been through a breakup, you know. And then you see your ex on vacation. It's no, I'm just you can, and uh, your ex is. Uh, uh, Rich, are you single? No. You have a girlfriend. Yes. How's that going? It's going well. How long have you guys been together? Almost three years. Really? I didn't know that. Well, pandemic. What is time? What is time? Um, have you ever seen an ex on the street in New York? Oh yeah. Have you said anything? No. That's good. That's healthy. You just keep moving. You just keep it moving. Did you was it did you see him across the street or did you see him right in front of you? Ships and, in the night. And neither of you guys said anything? I'm assuming she didn't see me. But it's hard to miss. Hard to miss. <laughs> <laughs> um okay, so crazy experience, right? So uh, me and this girl we broke up about five, six months ago. You know, after I kind of... After a few years, is it the girl I met? No, no, no. Oh, okay. I, I, I think I've had two girlfriends since we've known oh, each other. Okay. You know, loved and lost, whatever. Um, such is life. But uh, my most recent ex-girlfriend, you know, we split like earlier in the year. And then after a period of mourning, I decided to get back to dating. So I go out with this girl for dinner in the West Village. It was very nice. I walk her home. And as I'm walking her home, it was the day of the... Um, the, when the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. Yes. And beautiful night. <laughs> <laughs> I will say the weather that day was pretty It was good. a gorgeous night, yeah. 
great night to uh, riot, go out for dinner, you know, whatever you wanted to do. So this girl, like, I I guess if you can't tell from this podcast, like, I'm like a politically attuned person. Like, yeah, I follow the news. I watch Bill Maher. I'm a good little Democrat. Whatever the fuck. OK. Bill Maher's so, a Democrat? Yeah, but like on certain issues, he's kind of goes against party lines. But like he's a free health care and yeah. legalized weed kind of guy like me. Um, but anyways, on this date, this girl clearly is not attuned to what's going on politically. So like, you know, but it's the day Roe v. Wade's overturned and I'm on the date with a woman. So I'm just like in my head, I'm like, it's, I'm like, do I bring this up? Is this going to get brought up? You know, so I kind of was just like, yeah, like really disappointing, like news going on today. And she was just like, oh, yeah, like I think I heard something about that. Like she quit. And I was just like, OK, this girl's probably not for me because she's just not very engaged <laughs> in the conversation. So like after the date ends, I'm like, all right, I'm going to walk this girl home. No, fully no. Well, I'll probably no, never go on another date with her. Which again. is what it is. Even that's what that's is. New York, baby. That's New York, baby. Because that's just like a lot of dating. You mean it's whatever. Um, but as I'm walking her home, I run in not my most recent ex, but my previous ex. And she's clearly on the way to the protest because it was right by Washington Square Park. She had a sign in hand, but it was right, it was across the street. And like, I, dude, it floored me. Cause I was like, you know, I was getting out of one relationship going on my first date and then I see the previous relationship. Is this a one-on-one -on -one head on collision or you just see her cross the street? Okay. So she, does she see you? No, I did one of these. So I, 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 I didn't grab the lady, but like I, I, I kind of pushed the girl out. This, there's no way you to make directed. This. I directed it. I was like, I was like, let's walk this way. So we walked down a different street and we're walking down the street and then I see a girl who looks like the spitting image of my more recent ex-girlfriend. Okay, but not her. Same clothes, same ponytail, sunglasses. I was like, so then I was like, okay, we got to go a different way. She was like, my apartment's this way. So for like a half a mile, I'm just following someone who I presume is the person that, you know, her and I split like a couple weeks before. Right. And thankfully, we get to this person's apartment, and then that person turns, and it, it's not my ex. But for for like a good twenty minute walk, I thought I saw not one but two ex girlfriends. I thought that the guy tried to take a punch at me. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> um, I don't know. I've never told that story to anyone. There you go. That's a apple hour difference. Yeah. It just comes out of you. It's the couch. It's the vulnerability of the couch. That's right. It's, it's a safe space. It's like therapy. If only yeah. we could lay down. Rich, whoever thought that your podcast would be known as a safe space podcast? That's right. <laughs> Anyone, and next week, guess who's coming on? Kanye. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty bad, huh? Yeah, he's a wild kid. He got he got uh, turned out, turned away. All Every per, every sponsor broke Dropped up with him. Dropped him, yeah. And he's still going, right? Yeah, did you Is see... He still uh, talking? Yeah, did you see his TMZ clip from yesterday, two days ago? Oh, no, I didn't. Where he was like, you know, I went to a doctor, and I won't, <laughs> I won't uh, say what type of doctor, what type of hospital, what type of media it got reported to. He was Jewish. You know? Oh, no. Uh, but, like, how anti-Semitic do you have to be to be like, my doctor, who knows what media he reported it to? It's like, oh, how did you combine God. those two things? It's so bad. I mean, like, the it's guy. Fun. No, it's, it's fun. It's fun. You just sit back and you watch a man destroy everything. I know. I do worry about the um, kind of ramifications because he's in the public figure. Like, oh, people, yeah. People might be impressionable about what he's saying. It's very concerning. Didn't Kyrie then say something anti-Semitic? Yeah. I don't know what Kyrie said. I don't know what Kyrie said either. What I, what I love, not love, but what is totally off the wall to me is like, when people like people will d are defending Kanye right now, some people are, and they'll be they use the mental illness defense because they'll be like, "Well, he's bipolar." Listen, fellas, <laughs> I've got anxiety, <laughs> OCD, depression, alcoholism, <laughs> and you don't see me making these blanket anti-Semitic statements, you right? Know I mean? You know, to be like, bipolar is like yell at someone uh, who didn't stop at a stop sign. Yeah. <laughs> It's not go off about how the Jews are yeah. destroying you. It's honestly an insult to the bipolars. Yeah, it is an insult to the bipolars. It's crazy. But like people try to make but like up until recent weeks, 
that was like an accepted defense for Kanye's. Like if you would turn on CNN and they would be like, Kanye's making threats at Pete Davidson's house. They would legit have a quote unquote expert on who would be like, well, he is bipolar. We cannot forget this. You know, Don Lemon. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. But like, Pete Davidson's not Jewish. <laughs> but like up until a few days ago, like that was actually an acceptable defense for Kanye. Yeah. At least by the internet standards. And now finally people are being like, Okay, maybe let's back that up a bit. Yeah, maybe. Because uh, that's insane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just all racists are bipolar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was being bipolar. <laughs> that, you know, that's what they're using for the January 6th hearings. What, that, that, those people were bipolar? <laughs> yeah. It happens. That's their defense. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know. Might hold up. I don't know. I'm not a mental health clinician. It might hold up. So what are you doing for yeah. the holidays? For the holidays? Yeah, Thanksgiving's coming up. Oh, Thanksgiving no, from guy? fucking here. Oh, in here? Yeah. Right here in this house? Oh, no, go to Long Island. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's it. My parents yeah. are coming to New York for Thanksgiving for the first time. That'll be fun. Yeah, I said let's mix it up this year. Have you ever deep fried a turkey? No. Okay, We, me and Metcalf had a whole conversation yesterday about this. We've talked about it over the years because it's supposed to taste really good. Yeah, I thought you. I thought all things fried were supposed to have flour on them. Then you fry it, and you take it out. It's like crispy. It's got a, you know. No. Yeah, apparently. Yeah, that's what I found out yesterday. Huh. He brines it. He and brines it. He brines the Turk, and puts it in there. <laughs> the Turk, as in the Turk Salazzo from The Godfather. As in a Turk from Scrubs. No. <laughs> um. But that'd be nice. Yeah. You could order a Popeye's fried turkey. You know, there was a Popeye's next to me in Brooklyn and closed. Really? Right on Court Street there. They just opened one here. Maybe, Maybe. they moved. Maybe they brought their guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they heard you left here. They're like, oh, wait, Pomeroy came over here? All right, let's go. <laughs> Are you a Popeye's guy or a Chick-fil-A guy? I don't think those two should be compared. Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I think Popeye's, KFC, you can compare those. Oh, okay, okay. Chick-fil-A is its own... Bag of hammers. <laughs> Chick Fil A's doing its own thing. You can p- compare the that to like the spicy chicken sandwich of Wendy's. Wendy's. Oh, okay, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. before Chick Fil A, that was the best chicken sandwich around. Spicy chicken sandwich at Wendy's. At Wendy's, it's very good. Yeah. The number four. He remembers his numbers, folks. That's he right. Remembers his numbers. I only had to count to twelve. But yeah, so that's that's how I see the world. But I don't know about you. Yeah, I've never been a big Popeyes guy. Um, we had in, in Columbus. I don't even know if there is one. We would always go to KFC if we were going to get a, a chicken bucket, but we didn't eat much of that. It was like I said, more Wendy's. Chicken bucket's a real like weird way to describe it, but that's what it is. That is what it is. It's I a think. chicken bucket. Yeah. No, KFC was like fine dining to the half. So Popeyes has a Thanksgiving meal. Is that they got a Thanksgiving this? scenario? If you know if the Pomeroys are coming in and. Uh, yeah, so we're doing a a Whole Foods order pickup. That sounds about right. And we got to make our own. We gotta, it's sort of pre-made. I'm not sure what's pre-made. What I'm nervous about is New York ovens are half the size of a nice suburban oven. Yes. And I and I think in my parents' new house, they have a double oven, which I don't understand. A double that. oven? They don't even use it. It's they like, have two ovens? It's like an, two ovens on top of They have of a double-decker other. oven? Well, my mom loves to bake and all this stuff, but like, I don't know, they, they moved into this house in their old age. They, it's like a one, it's all one floor. A ranch? Yeah, but it has a loft. But there's no basement. Oh. There's no basement. What? But the master bedroom's on the first floor. What's in the loft? Um, like a bedroom and like a TV and like an office. Hmm. But the, 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 the what, what is the new term for master bedroom now? I heard that's term is no oh is that out that's very out that whatever but i can't remember the new term uh (laughs) the big one (laughs) so the big one is on the first floor yeah it's what it is um and it's because they my parents are like yeah when we get old we don't want to do stairs and at first i was just like oh jesus christ that's a fair argument dude when i was moving into my last apartment i i was like i'm not doing a walk up like, cause I, I like don't want to move. Like I'm going to stay in this place for a couple of years, hopefully. Okay. And it's like, I can't do stairs anymore. And here I was making fun of them in their mid sixties for being like, not wanting to do stairs anymore. And now you're 29. You threw your back out. Yeah. You can't do stairs. Oh, you can't punch the Chipotle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a hard week. <laughs> okay. I get it. I can't hate on them. 
No, I totally understand it. But anyways, are so, they staying with you? How does no, that work? No, no, they're doing the hotel thing. Yeah. I mean, maybe my sister will crash on my couch or something. Oh, even the sister's coming in. Thanksgiving. It's the fam. Oh, I don't know. Does she live at home? She, she doesn't live at home. She's older. Oh, okay. A couple years older. Um, but yeah, they're all coming in. Really, what what the reason the reason for this trip in is because um, I've been going to so many weddings lately. Yep. I'm out of funds, so I literally couldn't swing a five hundred dollar flight to, you know, Columbus for Thanksgiving. I got a whole. I got two weddings in the next week. Yeah. New Orleans and Connecticut. New Orleans. New Orleans. Who gets married in New Orleans? The old May planner, Mark Norman. Oh, you're going to that wedding? We're flying down. Wedding's a Thursday. We're flying down Monday. Then got to fly back Friday. Head to Connecticut Saturday. Is one of them from there or something? Or? Mark is. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. That's nice. So that'll be a time. I don't. I know, I know May a little bit from comedy. Yeah. And she's very nice. Very nice. So it'll be a nice wedding. Be a good time. Some good eggs. Metcalf will be there few other uh, Jews. So it'll be a good time. <laughs> and then what about Connecticut? That, my buddy, who works for ESPN. Oh, really? Bristol? No, it's in New Haven. New but Haven. they live in Bristol. Do, what, don't pe- Some people pronounce New Haven. They'll be like, New Haven. New Haven. Like, you ever hear of these people? No, New Haven. New Haven. I remember one time someone corrected me on my New, New Haven pronunciation. We'll have to ask Hardy. He would be the yeah, expert on the this. resident... He is a Westport guy. He's a Connecticut guy. He's a Connecticut kid. So go there, get some pizza, a little Frank Peps, a little Sally's of Pete's. That'll be a long week. Yeah. But never been to New Orleans. I've it. never been there either. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, that sounds nice. Saints are playing on Monday. While you're there? Yeah, but I'm not going. Okay. So, but they'll be there. Are we... Um are we at time? Now, uh, how long? Uh, You're giving me the motion. You know, I I, know, I don't do stand up anymore, but I can read the room. Delight. That's it. I usually do an hour. Oh, what are we at? Hour eleven. Yeah, that's, I'm good. That's good. We're good. All right, plug the movie again. Yeah, the movie's called The Rest of Your Life. Um, it's a coming of age comedy. It's about a guy named Brian who moves to Columbus, Ohio to start his job in corporate America. But it's not what it's cracked up to be. And then his girlfriend moves away to New York, so he's all alone. And he gets some help from his freewheeling coworker George, played by Matt Hardy, guest uh-huh. of the pod. Um, yeah, it's got a bunch of comics in the movie. Brittany Brave, Francis Ellis, Tom Luciano, Sama Siddiqui, Louis, Louis Galilei. I forgot Francis was in it. Yeah, he's yeah, got a nice little nice. bit part. And uh, we got a great soundtrack in the movie. A couple songs from the indie band Camp, one of my favorite bands. Oh, really? I yeah. saw him live at the Summer Central Stage? Park. Yeah. yeah, I was there with Tom. Were you really? Yeah. I was with, with uh, Emma. Tom was going to take a girl, and then um, she had plans or something. Yeah, he was like, "Do you want to buy my ticket?" I was like, "Yes." Um, And then, yeah, the score is done by some guys who have done some A twenty four movies. It's it's really nice. nice. It's a nice little indie. Um, But yeah, it's available on Apple on November eleventh, and you can pre order it now. And then soon it will be on Amazon and YouTube after that. Forward. And I heard Luciano does a pretty good job. Luciano does a fantastic job, All right. as does Matt Hardy. I mean, we assumed Hardy. Yeah. So, but Luciano, he can act. Uh, and he's bald. All right, folks.